This is your GM in the Great Barrier, and we are going live tonight with Star Trek Adventures Broken Sword. Uh, this will be following a, a Klingon crew in the years prior to Discovery and the original series, uh, circa 2250, for those keeping track in the Earth years. Before we get started here, I wanted to give our players the chance to introduce themselves and the characters they will be playing tonight. So, uh, for each of you, just name you are comfortable with, who you'll be playing, and that should do nicely. If any of you have a preferred public-facing social media or streaming presence, then I will say, by all means, share. But let's just, let's go down as they can see it in the Discord. So first, that would be a Tabak. Hey, how you doing? My name's Sean. I am an, I'm a grognard. I turned 51 this year, and I've been playing role-playing games since I was 10. Uh, my character in this game is Tabok, leader of the House of Kord. Uh, I am the currently the chief engineer of our piece of crap spaceship, and theoretically half owner thereof. I've uh, sunk a large portion of what remains of my family wealth into this in an attempt to fix the mistakes of my elders and try to recover something for my family. And there we go. That's me. Or at least my imaginary friend here. Spectacular. Let's go right on down the list. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Redar. Rafa. I am Metaldo, or you can call me Victor, either or. I am playing Raldar, the second engineer to this ship. The one more experienced with military vessels, as far as I can tell, as I had... I used to work for the Klingon Defense Force, but I am discharged from them now, and I am helping these folks with their work. And uh, that's about it. Next on down the list, we have Kresik. Hello, yes, I go by Rev. Uh, I am playing Kresik, uh, the Gorn Doctor. He is a doctor. That is his profession. Uh, he will put together, put back together all the soft skins uh, that come to him in various states of disrepair, um, but would like to just keep on living a very private and uh, unnoticeable existence. Spectacular. Uh, <laughs> next, let's hear from uh, let's hear from Woe. My name's Ray, and um, I'm playing Woe, and uh, she's the weapons officer on the ship. And, um, yeah, she's kind of a mystery. That'll take us on down to our last player, Azik Korg. Yeah, uh, I am, my name's Joe, uh, also known as Overland Gamer around the very, uh, I am Overland Gamer uh, around the web. I've got a podcast, I've got uh, TikTok, um, Facebook group, and Twitter. Um, I will be playing Azik Korg. A uh, one-armed Klingon helmsman. So I will be your pilot this evening. Spectacular. So backs up in your tray table, Stoad. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. So uh, we will be uh, we are uh, we are starting tonight uh, with our first episode, and I should say that for those wondering about the last character that always goes. Uh, uh, that no Star Trek related game is complete without. Uh, the crew will actually be playing with a old Klingon Raptor, um, specifically in the uh, most famous uh, from the earlier seasons of Enterprise. Um, so it is also indeed just about as old as that show is within the time scale. So that'll make for some interesting adventures to be sure. Um, but you will meet these characters and more as we go ahead here. Uh, first, we're going to get uh, we're going to get started though uh, by setting the scene a little bit, and we're going to move everyone to the planet of Guo Tkor. And all right, so it is night on Guo Tkor. Um, 
a murky one, illuminated less by the sparse lights of its main settlement and more by the nearby moon, the iridescent greens, purples, and some occasional hints of blue from the both from the pollution of a world that has long since been mined out of its useful metals and other resources, and partly from the iridescent astral phenomena that surround the world. Um, when it lost its value to the Empire, so too did the people that were unable to leave with it. Um, for some indeed were of more means than others uh, eh, on a difficult world such as this. Um, some from the, the conquered peoples of the Empire who were moved out of little choice of their own, others who had simply come to try and perform some honest work and well, did not properly uh, experience reward from it. At any rate, when, the, uh, when that time came, and with the ravages of the Kuvat virus, blades were raised and blood was shed, but there were no honorable deeds to speak of out here nor among the houses of any repute to hear them. Most of them sit on distant worlds in luxurious manners guarded by majestic fleets with a chancellor too weak to command them and warriors who are quick to die foolish deaths, all for the petty squabbles of families who care more for what they hold than of honor. It is night in the Empire. But much of that is more abstract than the immediate problems that face all of you here on Guo Decor, um, ranging from where you're getting your next meal to not getting shot in the night, and maybe as far as not going utterly broke if you aren't already there. And I think that it is pertinent to start first on the list for somebody who definitely is uh, anticipating that issue. Um, so that would certainly be on your mind, Tabak. Uh, tell us, uh, as you've received a message um, earlier in the, uh, slightly earlier in the evening, from your business partner, um, to meet up at a uh, sort of small hole in the wall um, bar in the main settlement. How would you be spending your evening, or? What is something that you would be doing beforehand? Assuming we already have the ship, then probably I'm spending almost all of my waking hours doing repair work to make the thing spaceworthy again. I don't believe I have anything called fair or free time. Mm, indeed not. The uh, You certainly don't have as much freedom as... Uh, Calvac does to uh, mill about the settlement and do as he uh, deems necessary, uh, all for the supposed progress of your uh, of your mission here. Um, so I suppose we could, if you'd prefer to start in the ship, then we can put you in the engine. If he needs me to meet him at a bar, I can meet him at a bar. Obviously, yeah. I need something to eat and something to drink. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. Um, and so far as uh, he knows you to be a practical man, I have no doubt. So he informs you that, uh, guessing you have not eaten yet, although not truly caring as much whether uh, you have done so, he does say that there is uh, there's indeed some option of uh, food and drink there. Fine, I will be there as soon as I can get there. Yeah, so right. eventually, I make my way there. Yep. Yeah. You record your message and proceed on route, um, or proceed on your way to the uh, to the location. Um, yeah, it is definitely a chillier night, and certainly beyond the uh, beyond the fact that as a Klingon you are not terribly fond of the cold, even for uh, even for several other species, this would probably be considered. Uh, something less than comfortable um i want a jacket thankfully at least the the breeze is not so uh, the breeze is not a terribly stiff one such that there is anything at all that would kick up the stale winds and rough uh grains of this uh, long since depleted world um 
So as you make your way, uh, as you make your way through the streets, uh, you see handfuls of characters around. Um, mostly the um, mostly a handful of the settlers that are around at night. Some of these people are uh, basically the colony's security, um, such that there is anything of the sort in this state. Um, but a good bit of it otherwise is just a handful of uh, rough characters, people getting off from what work there is to do. On your way there, would you be uh, attempting to contact anyone in particular or looking for anyone else whilst you are on the way there? No. Uh -huh. He wants to meet, I will go, I will meet, and then I will return to the work that needs to be done. Yes, yes. Always of the uh, always of the practical sort, the taking the next step ahead of you that uh, you hope will get you off this godforsaken rock, and perhaps on to the uh, or perhaps back to uh, back to home, back to the house and to a family that undoubtedly misses you. I if, I if, do what I must. Uh, well. The the trip is mostly on uh, is mostly uneventful then at least up to a point as you are finding your way around. Um, we'll uh, we will see actually who else is in close enough proximity where they might intersect with you. So I am actually going to ask. Um, I would say that this would be, uh, Azik, Kresik, and Raldar if. If each of you would like to possibly uh, enter, uh, like enter into the scene at this particular point, I will ask each of you to roll a single d20. Um, this can be treated as uh, this is sort of a homebrew rule I like to play with, where uh, we create a sort of initiative order for something like that. The lowest roll obviously goes first, since we are operating with Star Trek Adventures. Uh, if you would prefer not to necessarily fall in with this crowd or to develop into a crowd, you may abstain from the role, if so desired. I am going to abstain. I feel like Kresik would be spending as much time as possible in his medical facilities um, packing. Understood. And getting everything ready. We can circle back around there. Uh, Raldar, Korg, would either of you like to have the opportunity to roll here and possibly join in? Mm. Uh, I don't feel like my the man that is paying me would appreciate if I left the ship. Indeed not, but you have received the same message as... Uh, you've received the same message as um, Mr. Tabak has. As a matter of fact... Uh, all save for one of you has received a message with regard to uh, reporting to the tavern area. Well, if that is the case, then I would show up. Okay. I will make the roll then. All right. Um, Joe, would you want Ezek to also uh, roll for this? Yeah, uh, I'm assuming like typical bar area, there would probably be uh, some gambling or something going on. Indeed, perhaps. indeed. So, would you say that Azik is already there? Yep, yep. I'm probably. Uh, it's one of those things where I'm I'm anxiously looking around to make sure to see when the rest of my the rest of the crew shows up. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm slinging cards or. Uh, whatever the Klingon equivalent of poker would be. Spectacular. Well then, we will we'll follow up with you very shortly, but first, uh, uh, Raldar technically does have the higher role there, so we are going to uh, have the unmistakable hulking figure of a, uh, of a Gorn walking down the streets as well. Um, 
presuming that you don't necessarily, uh, even if you don't recognize Tabak, Tabak would be hard to miss you as you are finding your way around here. Raldar, what are you doing here? Well, I received a missive to arrive at the tavern. From? Your, the co-owner, I believe. He did not specify that others were coming. Fine, let us go. Yes. Of the way. Of course, Kalvak didn't tell either of you about that. It is very much not his way. But obviously, the uh, the two of you have been uh, the two of you would very likely know that he would. You wouldn't be surprised that he didn't consider you, but uh, perhaps just very slightly disappointed, if even that. All of that said, um, you make your way further down here, um, and as you uh, stroll uh, as you stroll through the streets, you realize you need to cut through a few of the alleys in order to actually um, find the proper location. Um, he chose the worst bar on this planet, did he not? <laughs> certainly, certainly. All right. Are there good bars on this planet? There are bad, and there are worse. I believe he has found the worst. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. At this moment, uh, as you are starting to pass through some of the alleyways, you do uh, make your way over a building where a small medical practice has been working for a time. Um... And at this point, uh, Kresik, I think we would take a quick nod to you. Um, before moving forward, I would ask, would you want a uh, proper scene as you uh, prepare to depart the uh, depart the space that you have left? Or sure, can I have a brief scene? Yes, yes. So, all right. Uh, how long have I been voluntold that I'm uh, a part of this crew? Would you say? Oh, that's probably been within the past day or so, and it is indeed something that, uh, if you would like to recall precisely what happened, then I can give you that opportunity. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. I don't need the specifics. Um, but he's been spending, he probably spent the first half of that time trying to find a way out of it. Um, once that was obvious that he couldn't, he has been trying to find as much information about who else is joining this death crew as possible in between getting his practice packed up. Hmm. Well, if you would like, I can give you the opportunity for the first roll of the evening. Would you like to try I would it. love that. Spectacular. So, we are going to make this hmm, to access the sort of records that you would want to do that would involve uh, essentially trying to access colonial records or ship registries, something of that sort. So, I think that reason would certainly make a lot of sense. Um, from there... I think that command would probably be the best fit for the situation. All right. And can I use my psychoanalysis focus based off of the information that I find to see who I would consider to be dangerous? It would probably give you the sparest of records. Um, unfortunately, the colonial register and information on shipping products, it, you might be able to cross-reference something with uh, what sparse arrest records or something of that sort were um, publicly available. However, this is not... Um, there's not as much detail as, say, a military database. Okay, so is that a yes or a no on my focus? Mm, I will... I can give you a very slim yes. Okay, it's up, it's up to you. I'm fine with, with a no as well. But I'll take it. 
So I will roll reason command, correct? Reason and command, yes. Standard complication range? Indeed. All right. And we will say, oh, there Oops, we sorry. go. No, that's quite all right. I was just about to mention we were going with a difficulty of one, which you have met and you have exceeded, which means that I have momentum tokens to assign you. Um, at this point, I would like to ask who would like to be our designated momentum officer, um, essentially, who, uh, who wants to be in charge of holding on to this whenever I assign it. Holding on to as in how? Just keeping track of it? Yep, I'm basically going to deal it out to one player, and then you will get the opportunity to, uh, or, like, you will just basically hold it. I will occasionally ask you to uh, play the momentum from your hands, which just means clicking on it and dragging it out from a little bar section. Sure, I'll do it. All right. Where do I hold it? Uh, you don't need to worry about that. I'm just going to deal it out to you. Uh, so let's just make sure that this works here. I have every intention, I should say, of amending oh, this momentum that. pile so that it is something appro uh, more appropriate to our usage. A little yeah, too peaceful. Right I now. was gonna uh, say. Little, little much of the blue. It's an artifact of, uh, of other games. It's all right. You're, you're on a budget anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think somewhere on my phone I have the Klingon Trefoil. <laughs> yes. Uh, Calvex aftermarket momentum tokens. Anyway. <clears throat> so, yes. Um, with that, there, uh, there does seem to be an official registry for the vessel designated as the Yan. Um, but there, uh, the file is... The barest of paperwork has been done on this thing. Um, it suggests ownership of uh, one Captain Kalvek, whom you know likes to keep Nausikans in his company, and that they are uh, perfectly willing to, uh, you know, essentially mess up one's uh, surroundings, uh, break personal items, what have you. So... Kalvek is certainly among the more dangerous uh, that you would know, or at least relative to this other individual uh, by the name of Tabak. Um, he is not a man that has stopped into your, uh, or has not stopped into your practice, nor has he sought any previous medical treatment here that you are aware of. Um, so whether he, uh, he's something of an unknown quantity, here, as would any other company. Um, but certainly, uh, you suspect he's at least, or, well, you would hope at least that he's not as uh, troublesome as the uh, as this Calvac person. And at the very least, you can be confident that he is not so much an agent of chaos as that one uh, Kazinti that is running around the colony and showing up in odd jobs, also in your medical practice a little too frequently. Very frequently. Um. Okay, good to know. From the information here, um, knowing about the ship, it looks like a pile of scrap. Pretty much. Um, okay. So far Careful as you were, uh, so far as you were aware, um, this class of vessel, uh, such that there's information on its registry, uh, it does suggest a very old Klingon vessel, uh, something that saw Imperial service about ninety years ago, and probably left it before. Uh, certainly well before the last Klingon century, and for some perspective, uh, probably even before the, uh, or before it hit the uh, 23rd century for humans. So this has not been uh, in service for a terribly long time. Excellent. Or rather, it's, so, okay. it's not been back in service for a very long time. 
Gotcha. So I finish packing my supplies that I need. Um, grab all of my hypos and scanners. Shove them in my bandolier where I keep them. And then I lumber into my tiny living quarters, which is actually the wreckage of my shuttle that I've converted into my living quarters. And I would like to basically start tearing into the walls of this thing and trying to get out any wiring, any power capacitors that still might work, uh, anything to help this death trap be less of a death trap. Parts is parts. Oh boy, Scra uh, uh, scrap acquisition. Let's let's get all the copper out so that we can uh, sell it on the market. Um, with the with the with the secondary bonus of making sure that like nobody loots this place while I'm gone. If it already looks like it's been looted. Yep. Yep. Can't can't loot the place if it's already been looted. Uh, for this one, I'm going to ask for. Let's call this a daring and engineering roll. Oh, oh great. And, my weakest, one of my weakest rolls. Yes. I will also... Uh, you know what? I will ask for fitness instead, just as a matter of uh, you are using your not inconsiderable strength to rip out parts of this. All right. And I'm guessing my focus on emergency medicine... Not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you might need it afterwards, depending on how the roll goes. Yes. You know, before you do roll this, uh, it is worth noting the GM has not dealt himself threat either. So That's uh, okay. Let's do that. That's fine. And let's you don't need it. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. but I want it. And I want to uh -huh. throw out a token of threat to increase your complication range up to two. All right. Let me know what the difficulty is, and uh, I will roll. Apologies there. Uh, I am going to set the difficulty on this to two. Okay. And you clear it. Um, it is a slightly time-consuming process, um, and a great many of the systems are already spent or barely warrant the salvage, uh, but you do find a power cell or two, a few bits of conduit that you can... Uh, break down into something that you can compress probably a few uh sort of data chip or crystal type medium um most of that you're uncertain as to how compatible it would be with the klingon systems um you, you scavenge a fair bit of gear that it's probably not going to uh let me put it this way i wouldn't take this to a shipyard and expect to even fully refit a shuttle but you might have a few spare parts odds and ends that are going to help things um a fair bit on like a room maybe something of the sort yeah anything to try to make this thing bearable yes yes well that also sufficiently delayed me from answering this this captain's summons um so after I've finished with that, then I pack my personal belongings. Then I start heading to this bar. Spectacular. Um, it is just as you are exiting um, and moving into the alleyways that, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you for one more role, actually. Uh, this one is going to be Insight and Security. Uh, the difficulty again, it actually, I'm going to draw this down to one for you. All right. Rolling. All right. One success. That is still enough. You hear what sounds to be a fairly loud thud and a bit of a commotion uh, deeper into the alleyways. Um, which, of course, uh, comes to no surprise for... Mr. Tabak and uh, Raldar, for both of you, hear and get some trace of that exact commotion as a, uh, as a Klingon man is flung out from one of these smaller alleyways and into the street. 
I laugh. Ah! Yes, yes. But at the same time, one hand goes to the uh, handle of one of the mechleths strapped to my lower back. Indeed, indeed. And so, um, do you go to investigate where the body was flung from? Well, we're passing it anyway to get to the bar, so look down it. Certainly. Uh, you, for your part at least, Tabak, um, you see what does appear to be several figures um, in a darkened bit of alleyway. Uh, this is honestly an area that looks like it was partly meant to be sealed, but some plates have been stripped away, or like bits of paneling that might have been meant to fill this in this might have even been meant to have been like a smaller sort of building space or something of the sort um there's all manner of trash other rubbish debris just all sorts of material kind of vaguely down the corridor um or not so much corridor as an open air uh, space but one that is sufficient for what seems to be Three or four people uh, can't exactly make it out from where you are. Lighting is probably bad as well. Yes, it's quite terrible. It is already very dark on the planet, and the light that you are getting from the pollution and phenomena in the atmosphere or uh, and out in space or from mm -hmm. the moon, neither are shining particularly well through this. We're all dark and you see down there. Mm. It's not any better. Not much. Keep my hand on the hilt of my blade. Keep my eyes down that corridor as we continue to walk past it. Not my problem. How how does the uh take a look at the Klingon that got thrown? How does how does he look? Um he looks like he took a bit of a a, a bit of a rough fall, a uh, Rather that he seems to have had, um, he seems to have hit the ground or possibly a wall, um, face first with considerable force, um, either from being thrown or from charging and severely overestimate, or rather, uh, misjudging the destination of his target or where it was going to be, uh, whatever the case, he... He's out like a light, but still conscious. Probably a little spurt of uh, purplish red blood running down his nose. There was no flash of a disruptor, was there? There is no flash of a disruptor at this point. Right. But there is still no, a commotion. before he came flying out is what I meant. No, no. Oh. Uh, still alive. Not my problem. Yep. So the the two of you... Uh, proceed to walk on by. Back down that alleyway, we it, we take a closer look at the circumstances that you find yourself in. For um, the uh, as far as these four Klingon Kusha are concerned, uh, whoa, they they're just a very rude bunch. I mean. Not only did they jump you and try to uh, try to just like go in swinging it right away, the the first one, the by far the most overconfident of the bunch, just started swinging without so much of a say uh, hand over your valuables or this is for such and such, uh, no grumbling about honor, just a few vicious palm strikes, some of which probably connected, and then a rush to grapple you before. Uh, you manage to fling the man uh, down the uh, down the way. Uh, the other three remain, however, and they have entered a semicircle. Um, the two figures to your flank ha are grasping what appears to be an elongated truncheon, and the others um, seem to be mostly. Um, uh, or rather, the center one seems to have produced a knife. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, right. I should have asked. Did the, the guy come who came flying out was a Kusha? Yes. All of the Klingons are Kusha. Ah, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I think I'm going to try and take on Knife Guy. 
And uh, I don't know. Woe stands to her full height and bares her teeth and says something like, um, Come on, you five headed fucker. Is this the best you can do? And uh, let me see. Can I use mean right hook on him? You can. So, what you would need to do is just a, uh, it'd be a simple daring and security task, um, which would be base difficulty of one and then it's contested against basically the uh, the other people that are rolling okay when i hear that that statement i'm gonna pause and just watch the fight because this could be entertaining spectacular so let's see how that meshes so that is gonna be a oh oh so that's one success there. For, uh, that's one success there from Woe. Um, the Klingon with the knife is going to attempt to meet that. Um, so that will be. Oh, they are going to. Uh, they're going to just beat that. Um, you do have the option to succeed at cost if you prefer. Essentially. Um, you can still beat them out, but it would uh, in, a complication of some sort would ensue. Um, alternatively, if you wish to tap a value that would give you a point of determination, then you might be able to re-roll or just accept the damage, basically. Uh, would you have a preference? Mm. Let's see. Mm. I guess I'll take the complication narrative. Um Okay. I can. Okay, I I will permit a succeed at cost here. So the you go in. Um, it seems as though the person was actually just about to start speaking before you uh, made your run at them. However, the interrupt they were able to catch themselves and uh, they were able to catch themselves uh, themselves before um, anything had gone. Uh, or rather, before you'd gotten too close. Um, their knife just... Uh, they essentially just miss you with the knife as they block with... Uh, they block one of your strikes with another arm. Um, they look like they wince a little bit with the sheer force that you hit them with, however. Um, as they try to come in with the knife from under that, you manage to just block, but they in turn kind of swing that around at, at like they kind of force you to uh, like the arm that has the knife they push into your arm a bit so that it still winds up going off to uh, your other side essentially uh, not making contact but it does give them the opportunity to kind of spin you around and suddenly the arm that you're using to punch or that you use to try and strike at them is now holding back this Klingon's other arm as they are trying to basically pull in towards your throat and try to knock you out. At the very least, they have you in something of a grapple. So, is with... there any way to? Uh... Sorry, go ahead. Oh uh, no, I was. Well, first I was actually just going to say we should make sure that uh, all of this is visible to people because apparently that uh, roll twenty did not want to move you at first. Let's try that again here. Here we are. And as far as the immediate situation, you would probably first have to break out of the grapple, uh, which is eminently possible, uh, particularly as the man you're grappling is going to use his action to monologue at you. Well, you probably should have thought of that before you double-crossed Corvat don't exactly like people that just bound uh, uh, bound from job to job or don't uh, fulfill their obligations. He's, like, struggling in, uh, to throw his weight into his other buddy. And... Um, what was the guy's name? I'm sorry, you cut out whenever you said it. Oh, that'd be Kovat. Colvot. Colvot was not. Colvot did not offer me 
any such honest work. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, mm. at all. Well, it matters very little at this point. Because he, um, because even if it, um, after what you pulled with our, uh, with our friend there, I frankly don't like you anymore for being a filthy Farasen Hadabach. You fucking Klingons, you're all the same. I don't understand a fucking word. And, uh, she goes to try and headbutt him off of her. Hmm, so, since we're breaking, uh, this is also an attempt to break the grapple here, I'm going to ask you for a fitness and security here. And it will also be contested by the Klingon that you are dealing with. Oh no. Ah! <laughs> Well, that's that's not going to be enough to break it. Uh, to which he calls out to one of his other um, associates, uh, some indescribable bit of Klingon, just to uh, gesture that uh, that you make out vaguely to say, uh, "Come here," and they're going to come in with one of the truncheons and prod you at the end of it. Which, unfortunately, since you are grappled, is not something you're going to be able to shield from. So that is going to uh, that is going to be a pain stick that makes contact. Kovat, though, is my partner, is he not? Or is that a different? Uh, Kalvak is uh, the uh, the partner. Ah, okay. Sorry, I apologize uh, for, um, for jumping. In. Quite all right. Is it? Is Kresik visible from where Woe is? That's um, what I was going to ask. Is, Kre is have I heard any of this, seen any of this going on? Uh, Kresik at this point is probably just rounding the corner, um, having heard the commotion from a little bit of distance. Um, as you take three points of stress, uh, Woe, the... Uh, it is, of course, quite agonizing. This may not have been your first time with a pain stick, but it's never particularly fun. Um, I let out the most pathetic cry. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Let's that, see. That's hilarious. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. Okay, let's see. I, uh, oh God, I think I, if he's just rounding the corner, I think I'm going to call out to Kresik for help. Or try to. Kresik, can... help me! You need hands. Come on, you scaly bastard, I'm not, ah! I'm not a fucking having fun here! All right, so Kresik, upon hearing his favorite patient? Question mark. Um, <laughs> Certainly one of your more frequent ones. Yes. Uh, and business associate um, is going to head down into that alley and he is going to attack the first thing that's not woe that he sees. Well, that would be a, uh, a Kusha woman who has just withdrawn from uh, sticking a pain stick into woe's side uh, who turns around on you and She's uh, probably mid process of making a threat as you um, or as you approach. You may choose I... to cut her off with a daring and security roll if you like. So since I have applied force, I can use fitness security. Ooh, go right ahead then. And I'm guessing my personal combat focus comes into play. That would apply, yes. Quick question: As I'm watching this fight for the entertainment value, do I recognize the name of Kresik? Have I been apprised of who our mm. new crew are? Kalvak has not kept you. He's not very good at keeping people in the loop on a lot of these things. Yeah, no, I know that. Stupid idiot. Uh, All right, that so is I'm unfortunate. I'm watching because it's getting. It, this is getting much more entertaining now. Oh. <laughs> yep, you. Uh... You best keep back going if you know what's uh, if you know what's good for you. Um, she manages to get out the threat as you close the distance. Um, since it looks like you go in for the strike there, what is Kresik at least trying to do? Backhand, just coming in and swing up in a backhand. Yep. Uh, she 
it, she sees it coming, unfortunately. Your movement is just sluggish enough. It, it's... It's almost like uh, maybe you haven't stretched. Maybe it's we're operating in TOS time for a moment where um, it's like the very slow, easily dodged uh, strike. Uh, but she ducks under that and then lances out with the pain stick. Um, yeah. It's the limp catching up with me. You know, yeah. not as fast as I used to be. Yeah. Still hasn't healed properly. Yeah. For for all you uh, for all you've been able to treat, you've never truly treated yourself. Yeah, that's fine. I'll take it. Yeah, that will be three points of stress. Um, which question? This... Am I so Klingon starting characters automatically start with armor, which gives them a resistance of one? Do I have that? Um, I don't know that yeah I, unless you personally had something on because uh, bearing in mind this is not an official um klingon imperial crew per se so yes yeah i just wanted to check and see because that's part of the standard starting gear for klingon characters but i wasn't you, sure yes and under any other circumstance or if this were a proper imperial uh, venture then you would have that armor um but otherwise it is what you have on you which, granted, Perfect. is a, a fair bit of scale. Perfect. All right. All right. So, yeah, the... the I would... I would... If you could see my eyes behind the tactical shields, I would wince. But you can't see any expression in the eyes from that. Indeed. It is... Uh... The blow, while it's very painful, it is not enough to stumble you or anything of the sort. Um, and it is such that uh, you are just completely impassive as uh, they try to jab you with it. Um, she's going to withdraw with a little bit of concern there now, uh, not sure whether she, in fact, did any damage. Um, but the initiative passes back to the two of you now, so... Um, I guess, mm -hmm. Kresik, you've already acted. Woe, do you want to try and break out again? Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to use... So what weapons does the uh, the one that's got me to grapple other than a knife? Is that it? Uh, the knife is the only weapon that he seems to have. Mm, okay, can't really... Can't use a focus for that. Okay, can I use the value since he's acting like I'm a dishonorable piece of garbage? Um, you are the monster others make you, and I go for a really low, like, between the legs attack, or either that or I go to bite his jugular out. I, well, not his jugular out, just... I was just looking mm. up how to translate testicles into Klingon. <laughs> oh. yes, not... Same brain. Yeah. Call, call, <laughs> calls, to, calls to mind the undiscovered country quote, not everybody keeps their genitals in the same place. Uh, okay, yeah, so I can't it, kill him, but I do want to incapacitate him in a way that is considered cowardly. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Um, you 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 could certainly go for the low blow. Um, I would accept something like that, and I would allow you the uh, I would allow you the daring and security role in order to do that. Okay. Um, or right, just to double check, you are you using the momentum for the auto crit? Um. I didn't think I will the, was, but the value, um, you mean? Sure. Uh, yes, value. That's rather what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. So that's. Oh no! Oh, that is no. four successes, and that Klingon, uh, the Kusha that has you, um, has uh, earned a complication. I am going to elect for a narrative complication, and because this is happening to an NPC, the player group gets to decide. Uh, Particularly, I would give uh, Woe... Uh, the... You get the first stabs at telling me what went wrong for this Klingon. Also, you get four momentum. Well, he had the... He, he, he made the first mistake of opening his mouth, so let's see. I guess she goes to... Uh, slides her hand 
between their like grappling bodies and I don't know I don't really know how their claws work but I'm imagining a little bit of uh, retraction and then uh, just completely squishes like a grapefruit in a goddamn like <laughs> just just destroys his genitals completely oh no just nothing's oh, left oh. <laughs> Oh, no. Absolutely nothing's left. It this is, poor man. It is it, so. Well, uh, first, it is uh, it is worthy of noting for lore purposes. Klingons do not have tear ducts. Um, if they did, oh. this man would most certainly be shedding them. I I dare say that. Uh, I'm gonna go as far as to say there might be blood coming out of his eyes at this point, for lack of anything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, the you at the very least get the highest pitched noise you have ever heard possibly in general. Um <laughs> certainly made by any living being. Um Can I can I lift his body off the ground by his dick? Like can oh I do that? God. Like just <laughs> <laughs> it, he did get the complication and at four successes i i don't think i can say no to you you lift him up he drops the knife uh you're lifting it up by the one arm too so uh like uh you know you bring him on kind of overhead and um he's like now completely unable to block you've uh, are we going for a uh are we going for a back break just to add insult to injury? No, I think I want to throw his body at the other person. Oh, the uh, see if it hits the the woman with the pain stick who is engaging Kresik, or the bald gentleman who is looking just aghast at this scenario. I think I'm going to throw it at the pain stick woman and uh, make eye contact with the bald guy. Like you're next. You are next. Ooh. I'm at the um. end of the hallway laughing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, did Raldar stay or did he keep going? No, I stayed. I'm saying I'm watching. <laughs> right in the gosh <laughs> All right, let's let's see how that throw goes. Uh, actually, for the throw, I'm going to ask. Um, you know, I'm just going to give it to you, actually. I'm just going to say it lands on top of her, and let's... Uh, under the challenge dice, I want you to set that to uh, 5. Uh, be sure to press enter before you roll the challenge dice. I'm going to treat this essentially as a uh, fair-sized bludgeon that... Um... Oh, actually, we should add security to that, so... For balance oh purposes, let, let's call it let's call it eight challenge dice. Throw momentum Where in there. Where are the challenge it? dice at? Uh, that's in the task roller section. Um, it should be at the very oh, task bottom. Rolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So put task roll to five. Um, no, the uh, below the task roll section, there's a challenge dice section on the character Oh sheet. my god, I'm sorry, I see it now. That's quite all okay. right. Okay, yes, um, sorry, I'm blind. No, you're fine. Set that to eight. Be sure to press enter. Eight? At, yes. Okay. And then right. give give it a roll here. Did it roll? Okay. It did now. So that would be five points of stress, which is certainly enough for an injury. I'm going to rule that uh, that effect, uh, or with those effects there, that would I'd probably give it at least a vicious quality. Um, but it is enough to, uh, and come to think of it, uh, knockdown would definitely apply. So this Klingon, uh, the Klingon you have in your hands, whose line you have uh, ended absent the, redun uh, the redundant biology, which granted... Uh, Klingons have in other cases. Um, the two are going to collide. The woman, before she's in a position to um, jab Kresik with another pain stick, uh, is going to fall to the ground. And as you turn to uh, face the Klingon, just giving him the absolute death stare. Um, 
I think he's going to take the better part of Valor or just decide that he's not being paid enough for this. Question. Yes. How does everybody feel about spending two advantage to keep the initiative? Ooh. If you wish to spend two momentum, uh, well... I'll leave it up to the party. Yes. Yeah, go for it. I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, Tabok, if you care to click on the momentum symbol just above your character, that'll open up a little menu where you can drag the momentum out and um, where do I drop, put it? just drop two of them on the screen. There we go. Okay. And I will get rid of them for you. All right, so the initiative is still yours. Kresik, what are you doing with it? I am heading over to Mr. Last Klingon. You and clear the distance and clear what? the distance. I'm going to take a swing at him. Spectacular. Um, so I believe Can I spend another momentum to get a third die? Huh? Up and to the party. If nobody else objects. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Nope. So base difficulty of one. Um, with uh, so my backhand didn't work this time. I'm using my forehand. Okay. So the Klingon's going to score two, and you are going to score three. Uh, that was the the open palm strike. Uh, wait, are you going for more of a slap or like a forward strike with your uh, a slap? Hand? This is basically just swinging around. Hands slightly cupped so that the claws are pointing inward toward this guy's face. Oh, you're going to leave him with a scar to remember you by. Exactly. Nice. Spectacular. Uh, so as you close the distance with him and give him that nicely cupped slap, uh, go ahead and roll damage for me. Yes. Uh, you will also get one momentum back unless you wish to put that into some sort of damage effect. We'll see what happens. All right. That's five damage. That's good enough for me. Yep. And that is yeah. enough to... Uh, that's enough to knock him down as well. Um, I was going for non-lethal, by the way. Just yeah. just so you're aware. Understood. Um, so, with that, uh, you knock him down. Uh, the, the claws... They miss anything vital, but you definitely uh, leave some scratches on the back of his bald head um, as he falls to the floor, losing his pain stick. He looks angry for a moment, but between the calculus of you uh, having a considerable height and strength advantage, losing his weapon, um, the fact that you have an ally, um, and the fact that you struck him with the... Uh, inside of your palm, which is not interpreted as a uh, duel to the death, um, his prior calculation about not being paid enough still stands. So he is going to shuffle to his feet and just stumble off running down the um, alleyway and disengaging. Towards me? Um, you know, I will say he does aim to run past you and Raldar. I'm at that point i'm going to step in front of him with my mech left drawn and say get back in that fight you fucking coward i love it i love it <laughs> he, he has no weapon at this point and so it just turns to him and says yeah you want uh you want to fight that thing fine be my guest but it's not my I'm... fight coward and it's not mine either you have no honor. <laughs> Rich coming from... Uh, truly uh, ironic coming from a fellow Kusha. There's no honor to be found in this world. Then leave it yet before I waste my time killing you. Mm. I will remember your face. Pray that I do not see it again. Uh, the the uh, this bald, somewhat wizened Klingon uh, just bypasses you and continues on down and 
bl- uh, like purplish blood running from the back of his head and uh, just shuffling off down the uh, like as far away from you as he could get I see the mechleth and proceed down the alley so with that, uh, yeah, Kresik and uh, Kresik and Woe, first you have a moment to yourselves where the, uh, the Klingons have since retreated, of course. Um, I walk past to where the two defeated Klingons are. Um, just make a quick cursory check to make sure they're not going to die from their wounds. And as long as they're not, I just drop a very badly written, because my hands are so large and the pins are so small, um, very badly written directions to the second best doctor on this facility, mm-hmm. on this on this planet. Well, from your cursory look, the, the woman there appears to be just grumbling a little bit uh, but is partly conscious uh, she's going to be fine you think um, the man certainly wishes he was dead and he but he will be able to walk albeit very very slowly go see a doctor uh, is about all you get out of him now <laughs> You are in pain. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Uh Uh Um, At this point, uh, so, Tabak, you at least are joining them. Uh, Raldar, are you also approaching? I'm I'm walking into the into the area. Hands, Hands at shoulder height palms forward to indicate that I am unarmed. You fought well. I I kind of like, I look at between myself and I was like, hey, me a crazy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not believe I have laughed more than when you emasculated that fool. He hey, is in pain. Yes, his gojma have been crushed. <laughs> Brilliant move. Yeah. Just wanted yeah. to make sure he didn't dishonor his own bloodline, but you know. Well, there will Thanks. be no bloodline from what I saw. You have yeah. ended his line. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have yeah. two? Yes. Because like, you know they have two, right? You've worked on them. Several times. I've seen you. Soft skins are all the same. We have two of everything. Hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't that give you four? Why four? Extra? Two. Everyone already, already has two. Since he's come in, my Charm eyes have not seven. left the other Gorn here. Indeed. So, uh, Raldar, it takes a, it it takes a moment for you to register, but you realize, indeed, one of the other uh, figures is in fact, um, well, they are certainly reptilian, and you may not necessarily recognize them as another Gorn. However, given um, if memory serves, between the two subspecies, uh, let's see, Cressix, yours was the um, yours was the shorter of the two, was it not? Or am uh, I, gonna I stand I stand about eight and a half feet tall, average. Okay, Raldor, um, had you decided how tall your Gorn was? Probably on the taller side. Does. Uh, I'd say you had had a well-fed childhood. Oh. <laughs> so fat? Not fat. Portly. So, Muscular. Uh, yeah. Um, suffice to say that uh, 
Uh, okay, so I was getting it mixed up then. While there's no appreciable height difference, um, there's a different sort of facial scale, uh, facial structure, scaling, and um, slight like change to the hue of their uh, of the reptilian gentleman's uh, flesh. But this. Uh, they, their eyes seem directed to you, although you cannot precisely register that, nor their expression, as they appear to have um, a sort of visor over their uh, eyes. I actually think, in some sense, it's similar to one that you wear. Uh, Raza doesn't wear the tactical eye covers. Right. I, I looked closer at the image and realized that it, it, that was indeed not the case, so, yeah. I only picked this image because it was the best one I could find. <laughs> of course. And it is a very good image. It is. I quite like it. Yes. Krasik wears his sunglasses at night. Yes. Couldn't help that. Sorry. But he is... But he I'm is mad no at you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have no. that stupid song stuck in my head forever now. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I can. Punishment. Uh, yeah. But he is sort of wearing uh, a still somewhat patched together uh, KDF uniform. Mm. Mm, okay. Made for his size. No, so... Whoa, what was it this time? I don't fucking keep track anymore. It's just one job after the other and no one's ever happy. What is the point of doing this anymore? <laughs> Look at growling. You got some of the skin samples. Just, I don't have any things with me, but you got the stuff. Yes. I hand you a hypo. I say, Thank you, thank you. Much obliged. 0. 0.025 seconds faster. You just never happy, mate, are you? Right, you fucking sunshine, you. Mm -hmm. oh. At any rate, the uh, for everyone but whoa, uh, there is the uh, there is a secondary sort of alarm on uh, whatever transmitters you have, a reminder of your imminent appointment. And now that all of ours go off at the same time. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'm guessing we figure this out. What does that bastard want now? Raldar, let us go. Well, this, we've been distracted for long enough. This was entertaining. Thank you. Don't catch any bugs. And then head off. Or back, continue on the way back to the bar. Bugs carry diseases, and I also follow. Mm. Oh. I'm just following crazy now. <laughs> uh, that is the safest bet because you don't know uh, whether Kovat has any more uh, uh, has any more people around, and you know, strength in numbers. Better to stick to the pack. Hey. So, mm -hmm. furry one, why were those three Patak? attacking you oh no disputes business is business uh, if they don't like the way I handle things that's their problem you handled yourself well and them <clears throat> oh yes I handled them very well thank you for noticing mm. you may wish to clean your hand yeah I kind of just wipe it on the box <laughs> <laughs> On her? You wipe it on me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I clap you on the back, but I'm wiping my hand on your shoulder. <laughs> as, uh, as this scene... I of... make a mental note of this. <clears throat> yeah. Your Tabak, actions uh, will be remembered. Yes, Taybok <laughs> yeah. will remember this. Um, uh, Taybok can leave a Yelp review, because that'll be what's happening if he even bothers to bother me. Yeah, you'll 
claw my gochma off and I'll yelp. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. probably I mispronounced that. Gochma. Yeah. Anyway. Back in the... Uh, over in the bar, um, where exactly one of the crew has been this whole time um, taking advantage of... Uh, well, I imagine whatever resources were around. Uh, unfortunately, there is very little in the way of gambling this night, but there is a uh, there's a very uh, see. I would say blood wine, but I don't think this colony is quite good enough to get even a decent vintage or anything that doesn't come out of a box. And when I say box, I mean yeah, box like, blood wine is just it, it's like a big metal crate of a box like the not, yeah not even a not even a decent barrel yes so it's it's the klingon equivalent of bud light so no it's the klingon equivalent of franzia mm. <laughs> I, I i'd say that's reasonable enough um i mean it is not a reasonable vintage certainly but it's cheap and it's the thing that they have They've probably got Romulan ale back there, but nobody uh, nobody touches that stuff. That's just gross. No, no. The the last raids into Romulan space have not been in some time, so it's uh, those supplies yeah, might be kept fairly preciously by those who develop a taste for the nasty stuff. Probably turned into Romulan have... vinegar by now. And we have yet to discover prune juice. Yes. Uh, War, uh, warriors live in this era without knowledge of the drink. Um, mm. Yes, the drink of warriors. Yes. But, Prunus. Indeed. In any case, uh, as I walk you... in with Raldar and scan the room for my Patak business partner. Well, well as, as you were starting to enter and survey the area... Um, uh, as it, is there anything in particular you would be trying to do uh, with what swill you have and the uh, the small handful of uh, patrons that might be about? Uh, well, if there's not a lot of gambling and stuff going on, I think I'd just uh, kind of just observe and see uh, see what's going on. Um, you know, enjoy, I'm assuming there's some live music or something going on, so mm. kind of just sitting back and relax, waiting for my uh, my party to get here. Uh, live music is being generous with uh, the, the exact nature of the thing. It is it's probably some old recording of Klingon opera that is skipping every so often. Um, Whatever medium they are using to, uh, or like to broadcast it, whether it's some sort of physical media, whether they are receiving a transmission from somewhere, which on um, this god awful rock seems even less likely. Um, it's pretty. It, it's pretty rough, um, but it's better than the. It's better than the static you get just half the time. And otherwise, uh, the uh, the occasional bit of uh, well, it's something Nausicaan, and it's something approximating music. That's about all you can tell. Uh, I think I'd still be uh, be interest interested just listening to it. Uh, yeah, I gotcha. Uh, as you were uh, as you were getting settled in um the uh, the one person working the bar comes over um who is entirely too large oh dear let's massive yes the the infinite klingon that's the episode right now <laughs> oh that's a deep cut what if the planet was a klingon oh He'd Damn it, now you, fig- you figured out my end plot. I need to toss that out. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that for this campaign. Oh my God. Oh, all okay. because of one missized token. That's all it took. Plan B. I was 
I was picturing the uh, the extra large person from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes. <laughs> What's even happening? <laughs> if the planet was a giant Klingon, he'd have a massive ego. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure you'd stroke it up and down, mate. Oh, All dear. right. You know, I I must say, you are the first person I have seen even give so much as a gentle sway to uh, the audio here. Well, I consider myself a cultured Klingon of sorts. Mm. She meets you with a slightly quizzical look. Uh, give us a little bit more of a description of um, of Azek as he starts to engage here. Uh, yeah, well, he's uh, more of a traditional Klingon. Um, has the, the full ridges and a uh, sash. Uh, very reminiscent of John Sh- Shuck's character from Undiscovered Country. Um, so he's kind of got the beard going all the way around, long hair. Um, the most distinguished feature of him is probably, or most noticeable feature is the fact that he's got one arm. He is missing his, uh, his right arm. Um, it's bandaged up and it, it looks like it's just, it's a sleeve that just doesn't have the arm. So it's not like he tailored his suit to, to, or his outfit to match it. Um, got a few scars all over, um, very rough, but just very calm, calm demeanor. Um, yeah. Do I know Asik yet? I I believe so. Okay. I think we've met, uh, I think we discussed it, uh, yeah. Okay. Ah. Apologies, I may have missed that note there, so that is uh, that is my mistake if I had said otherwise earlier. Um, in any case, um, as the door opens and new patrons start to come in, she says, well, cultured for an old warrior such as yourself, I suppose, is the best description. I, well, I can only hope that you uh, came to this place with some honor. There's a few, a uh, few else, uh, few others who could lay such a claim. Well, <clears throat> a Klingon is only as good as his honor. Um, have you had much problem with uh, anyone specific, or is it just general uh, rough and tumble folk? Um, handful of occasional miscreants. Nothing I can't handle, though. Um, she immediately pulls a, uh, she immediately pulls a mechleth from behind her. I can get to this pretty quickly. And a disruptor could pistol I, on the left hand. Could I do like a, uh, what would it be, a security insight to see how sharp the, bl- the blade is? Sure thing. Um, I will uh, set that. that. I will give you difficulty of one. No, you can actually roll. Uh, the default roll for this would actually be two dice, so uh, or two d twenties. Oh, okay. okay. No. Hang on. Apologies, <laughs> I should have communicated that more clearly. I'm still getting used to the whole roll twenty thing, so we're good. Uh, of course, of course. All right, so that's two successes. That'll earn momentum for the uh, for the group there. So I'll deal that out to the pool. It's a pretty decently maintained batleth. Uh, likewise with the disruptor that she is pointed just slightly off center from, uh, or like slightly off to the left from where you are. She uh, she also does not have her finger on the trigger, so there is some decent Good discipline there. Discipline. If not military, she uh, at least very has... nice. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, if not military, she at least knows how to handle uh, disruptive patrons. I'll uh, compliment her on the uh, the blade, and uh, I bet there's a, a 
good story of how that came about. <sighs> there are no good stories here. Or if there is, I have yet to hear it. I suppose let me know if that changes. Um, to which she will sheathe her. Uh, she will sheathe the weapons. And um, as she does that, to uh, the patrons are getting a uh, getting into the uh, room proper, and they are an interesting bunch. Um, what appears to be uh, a couple of very tall reptilian figures, you, with some previous service as a Klingon warrior, you probably recognize them as Gorn. Um, and what? And I, oh, go ahead. I believe Azik has come to my facilities before. Indeed, so I do recall that. So you would actually notice uh, the good Doctor Kresik, who has. Uh, whose services you have tended to. Um, likewise, another familiar face would be the one Klingon in the group, the, the Kusha that you know as uh, Tabak. When I see those two, um, I'll ask her to pour. Uh, we might need some uh, extra glasses for, for my friends here. Um, looks like they're bringing uh, company of their own, so... Uh, Make sure that everybody gets one. Uh, I'll try to break out something a little fresher. She Appreciate it. She turns and heads back towards the bar. Um, the the four of you approach, um, which as as you get closer, you do indeed notice as if there is a Kazinti amongst the er, amongst the bunch. I walk up why and are, uh, why are you chills two still here? <laughs> Looking at the Kazinti and the other Gorn. Why are you still here? I don't know. Why are any of us here? You know, it's just uh, the universe has a funny way of working out. You know, I give him a big lazy smile, tilt my head. Why are you here, mate? What's uh, your mystery? What's your story? A philosopher. Wonderful. I have business here. <laughs> leave, leave us. We must attend to our business. Mm. That's, I that's not him being rude. Remember, shoulder. that's just how Klingons talk. Uh, I don't. I don't take any offense. Um, I give. I give Kresik's shoulder a squeeze, and I say, "What do you want from the bar?" Water. <laughs> Kresik. Clean water. Oh, good luck with Hello. that. Hello. <laughs> water. Okay. Oh. We. Oh. Uh oh. I believe that Ray has momentarily dropped out. She may not have been able to hear us. Uh, we have heard there. I don't. No. Nope. Okay. Is Woe back? Hello. Hey, Hello. we can hear you, Woe. Can you hear us? Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Oh, completely cut out, I guess. Yeah. Kresik wants water. And Clean we all... water. <laughs> we laughed. Oh, okay. All right, be right back. I'm going to go off oh. to get the clean water. Indeed. I'm probably the only person at this bar who ever orders water. He, he probably, might... yeah. And that's probably why the bartender hates you. <laughs> and specifically, <laughs> if it's not clean, I will just dump it. Well, You'll still get charged. <laughs> you you've probably uh, you've probably patched up enough people that she's sent your way that uh, there's a bit of an understanding at the very least. That said, water reclamation around here is uh, a tad expensive. Um, but yes, the, the bunch of you arrive, and given that, uh, Tabak, I presume you, uh, since you knew Ezek before, you would have known mm -hmm. that he was, uh, would you have known his employment status then? Um, aside from, he's working for us, aside from that, I don't know much at all. Yeah, that was the, that was and, the main And point. don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> 
Indeed not. Isaac, where is the idiot who called us here? Well, I don't, I, I'm not uh, quite sure. I've just been kind of just enjoying the music and enjoying the company of the barkeep here. And uh, I saw enjoy. you guys come in and uh, you enjoy friends. this noise. Oh, of course. You were your, called your, here? Your lack of taste astounds me, Azik. Yeah, uh, just, what... just wait till we hit uh, warp three. I start getting a little sea shanty ish. Ooh, wonderful. Hmm. What uh, will we do um, with the drunken yes. Klingon? What will we do with the drunken Klingon? Stop. <laughs> Stop now. Ah, uh, yes. The, do, uh... not, do not make me kill you, Hezek, please. <laughs> It's a, it is a song you've not heard until you've heard it in the original Klingon. Original Klingon. <laughs> yes, we, we said the joke, everybody. Get your bingo hey. cards out. Um, um, woe is your coming back, and as uh, the rest of you are starting to wonder why, uh, starting to wonder why you were here when you're. Uh, employer, or at least a co-owner in your case, Tabak is not, is precisely when he steps through the door. In tow, he has a man who, while not quite as tall as the Gorn, is certainly taller than him by a head, and probably, indeed, the other Klingons. Um, he is a Nausicaan man with very large, bladed gauntlets, uh, spiked sort of shoulder armor, and a thick armor-plated vest. Um, he's very bulky in terms of his build, and uh, seems to have all manner of gear kind of uh, strapped around um, on easy display, particularly um, a very large, vicious bludgeon, a, a truncheon of sorts, but not a, a nothing you suspect is powered in any way. Um, a disruptor pistol slung to his side, and based on what is strapped to his back, a rifle as well. Um, the uh, the Klingon that walks ahead of him is another Hemkush, um, a, one of the sta uh, one of those with the ridges that the species has long held. Um, he too has come in armed uh, with a dis uh, disruptor pistol and tic tac, uh, neatly kind of arranged along the sort of fur jacket that he wears with a sort of traditional vest over that. Um, despite his look, uh, you know that he, if he has had any military service, then it is not been in some time, and he is not a particularly older Klingon as far as you know, Tabok, so the the dress is uh, you know, such that there was any resemblance to a previous Klingon uniform would be completely coincidental. Um, uh, you've all managed to be here on time. That is a relief at once, or at least... Glad you could take yourself away from your pleasures and join us. <sighs> I have uh, I have seen to the profitability of our venture here, as a pool, uh, seeing to it that when that junker that you have uh, fixed up is in position to uh, fly, that we can do what we need to. As a matter of fact, I have uh, I have ensured that as we speak. Our cargo is being loaded on. And what as cargo? That is que uh, that is a question for later, and one that, in truth, you needn't know. But suffice to say, it will pay back this venture, and then some. And as he's saying this, um, 
Well, I will presume that you are coming by with the drinks. Uh, this Klingon just kind of eyes you. Oh, the service declined so much in this blasted place, they're hiring Ferrisan. I'm just going to watch and see what her reaction is. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh. Did I lose everybody? No, Hello. I can see. I hear you. Okay, yep. there we go. Uh, possibly, uh, we may have lost Woe once again. I we believe are not, so. We're not hearing you. Oh. And she's back. Now, can you hear us, or can we hear you? That is the question. But well, the her answer... microphone's not hearing her. Oh, there, oh, there you are. Good God, guys. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. Sorry. Technical issues. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. What was the last thing you heard? Um, You said, oh, I can't wait to watch this. I had said something before that, but I don't know if I was heard or not. Nope, you were not. not. Ah. Okay, so the last thing you said I heard was, um, oh, there's ser uh, service so bad, and I said, um, oh, the service couldn't afford me here, mate. My rate's much too high. And I give him a big saucy wink, and I sit down next to him, <laughs> very brazenly. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, well, I'm going to just start arraying characters around. Feel free to change the seating arrangement as you so wish. Um, the, the, I remain standing. Uh, spectacular. The, how? Where's the Nausicaan in a relation to him? Is he so far back? He is. He comes up, like, directly behind him. That's a good mm, Okay. Oh, oh no. <laughs> All right, so I'm right next to the Norse. Can, can I uh, can I try some sleight of hand whenever they start talking? Oh, you may attempt it. Uh, whom are you attempting the sleight of hand on? I want to take the pistol from the Norse. All right. Um. So I will just say, go ahead, and I think I'm going to ask for a daring and security roll that will be contested against the Nausicaan's insight and security after you've rolled. Um, it is going to be a difficulty one roll. Uh, Feel free to take some momentum. Yes. Which momentum do we have? You have, have four, four momentum. Alright. Um... We have no momentum. <laughs> whoa, 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 hold on. Uh, you, you, can, you can buy three dice. Uh, you can buy... Ah. Um, Two additional, Two additional dice, dice. Right? yes. All right, give me one of those back then. <laughs> uh, just click on it, and you should be able to take it back. Um, but yes, given that, yeah, I okay. will permit you the opportunity to re-roll with the appropriate number of dice, or just roll another two dice on top of the two you've already rolled. Okay. Sorry. Oh Oof. my god, that was terrible. Oof. And I used a focus! That sucks! Wow. Okay, well... <laughs> I tried. Absolutely bombed it. Bombed. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> well, let's see if uh, let's see how the Noskin himself does on this. Um, zeros. So, as um, as far as our uh, as far as our initial task. Um, I have worked out a very simple cargo delivery um, run that uh, one that uh, will not be particularly fancy will in, uh, will give us the opportunity to at least recoup the investment given the uh, given the interest and demands of our clients for uh, for are? the for our uh, for our safety and for, uh, to ensure that they, uh, there is no chance of them being uh, sp uh, being spooked as it were for they are of a fragile disposition I will be keeping that until we arrive at our destination then they are no Klingons no 
But they... Fragile, fragile disposition. Indeed. But we cannot afford to be so picky. Nor... And, uh, nor should you have any fleeting hope of gaining honor. Perhaps on better days you will get that chance, but uh, that is not for you today. For now you what? shall have to be satisfied by gaining some of your investment back. What is our cargo? That too, at their request, remains confidential. Well, I can You're give not you... not bringing anything on my ship that I don't know about. That ship is half mine. And half mine. And if you want... Uh, and if you want to make any of the resources back that you have put into that ship, then you, uh, then you will accept the cargo as I uh, transport it. You will... Uh, and you won't comply with the order. Otherwise, this venture stops before it can even begin. I can at least tell you that I have secured cargo that is not volatile nor hazardous in any sense. So long as uh, so long as we maintain it securely, a venture that. He gives a gesture to uh, Krosoth, um, who at this moment is just on the fence of uh, not being able to... Eh. I'm going to say that with that distraction, um, he's going to just acknowledge that and just look away to where um, he doesn't notice the... Eh. He doesn't notice that the disruptor pistol is being moved out, but it's maybe obvious to some of the others who... Uh, if you want to send the verbal signal before uh, Kroshoth uh, makes a move or otherwise uh, does anything that would uh, give away Woe's position, now's the time for uh, non-verbal cues, as it were. No, I'm not going to let that play out. I just look at Woe and nod. I'm ignoring it. <laughs> If I, I see it, oh. I'm just going to ignore it. I, I know this. <laughs> this this Kazin can handle herself. Not my fight. Not yet. Spectacular. Fight. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna holler over to the uh, to the barkeep and say I'm sorry. Um, I okay. bring it out, make it look super obvious, and I'm just kind of holding it to the side of my head, like <laughs> like I'm thinking. <laughs> That will be. And I you're, like, you're like that... rubbing it on the side of your head, like you're thinking. Yep. Yep. The barrel. The, the... Yeah. He shall be responsible for the security of our cargo. Um. And, and as... I... uh... really, <laughs> that one will be uh, in I've... charge of security. Ah, I see. I point to Adam with his own gun, like. Are you sure about that, mate? Are you sure? Kersh yeah, absolutely <laughs> positive. That's a good idea. Kershaw's eyes uh, widen quite a bit as he reaches out a hand to grab for yours. Um, this is going to be a daring and security on his part. If you are you contesting or are are you ex uh, are you aiming to uh, are you just aiming to freak him out a little? Um, I have no desire to fight him. I just want to prove that he's incompetent at his job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he uh, <laughs> that will indeed be proved as he grabs your wrist and sort of like just tries to go in for a squeeze while also moving the disruptor like slightly out of the uh, line of sight to where it would hit him. Um, uh, I is... drop the disruptor into my other hand and hold it again at his head. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Aria. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a big smile and then I, I flip it and catch it and hold it out to him like he can have it back. He reaches out to take it. 
I quickly pull it back. I'm still joking with him, but I finally give it to him completely. Um, uh, he'll snatch it back, uh, to which Calvac will give the just the most disgusted look. I like this one. Calvac I'm grinning ear to ear, and I just... Calvac ponders this. Uh, no, no, you're fine. Um... He he made uh, the neurons uh, fire in his head. If you're uh, if you're bringing along another pet, then uh, the care for it comes out of your share. Let's be adamantly clear about that now. I look over at uh, whoa. Are you in need of employment? I'm always in need of employment, mate. Good. Come to this docking slip before we leave, and you'll have it. <laughs> in <laughs> addition, to, in addition to them, we uh, I have acquired slightly more help. Uh, another uh, more security to supplement um, Cro uh, to supplement Kroshoff here. He buys on the times when he apparently needs to train his better. Um, and then some thing that will handle scientific duties. He says the last bit with utter disdain. More so alluding to some thing as opposed to the, uh, the scientific part. But he, he's not particularly happy on any of it. And I can tell you now our destination. Please. Be so benevolent and kind as to do so. Yes. We will be setting a course once we depart for Clark de Kelbracht. Quick uh, question, Mr. GM. Clark de Kelbracht is all the way on the eastern frontier of Klingon space towards the towards the core where it sort of butts up against the Romulans. Where are we now in relation to that? Mm. So I would say that uh, you're definitely on an outlying world uh, such that it is uh, it's a little bit um, kind of to the south of the uh, uh, the salient that extends near the Romulan worlds, it's kind of, it's almost, uh, it's kind of on the verge of being in like a, uh, it's on the verge of being kind of in a periphery of Klingon space where there's still a bit of uh, empty space not claimed by either the burgeoning Federation or by, um, or by the old enemies in the Romulan Star Empire. Um, I would say that you are still a bit like galactic west of them, relatively speaking, uh, maybe southwest. So it's it's going okay, to be a so, okay. fair haul, basically, to get there. Yeah, it's going to be a long trip. Okay. <clears throat> I I apologize. I, there's a you're fine. Um, anyone else who uh, would like to know just a little more about the destination in general may perform a reason and con role. Reason and... I know the location. But I'm I'm cons I as pilot I would be uh, concerned about dangers like nebulas and asteroids and stuff like that. Or asteroid belts and stuff like that that we're going to have to navigate through. So, yeah, well, it would certainly make sense for you. Um, so, well, you you know vaguely that there's some sort of uh, fairly large uh, stellar phenomena of sorts, um, but you don't know the full details about it. Um, Azik, on the other hand, as somebody who has a fair bit of training in navigation. Uh, would recall that um, the uh, the clock de Kelbracht, um, 
for other viewers, uh, you may know as the Briar Patch, uh, as was seen in Star Trek Insurrection, is essentially the remnants of supernova that have long since uh, uh, that have sort of coalesced in an area. It is a hazardous area of space for navigation. Um, particularly, uh, it is very rough for um, like fast interstellar travel. Warp speed is not recommended in that area. Um, it is also um, particularly rough on impulse engines so it considerable uh, there's a considerable speed reduction that comes into play um, there is also a um, it, there are hazards of like various unstable gases that may do anything from mess with sensors to possibly be combustible if you fly into the wrong area god forbid you set off any weapons uh, to oh, be sure. Metrion gas, wonderful. Indeed. Uh, there are um, there are some rumors of other hostile species in other parts of it, but they are uh, contact has not been verified with them, and uh, like they're they would uh, any such reports suggest it's more on a far end of the phenomena. I would like to roll that in particular to make sh to see if I'm going in the safest direction for me, which is away from any potential governmental entities that might be looking for me. <laughs> okay, and uh, you are fairly certain that this will take you further away from the hegemony, so... The first break I've caught this entire time. Yep. Granted, as you, uh, as you understand it, um, as you understand from uh, what little you know of the uh, ship's registry, uh, there's barely reason to be confident that that old scra uh, that an old scrapper like that would be capable of making it up into uh making it up into orbit let alone uh, oh yeah getting that distance no i'm gonna die but i'm gonna die farther away from the hegemony yes which is still a win <laughs> yep. yes die on your feet provided there's still deck plating for you to stand on <laughs> anyway um so uh calvac continues we, uh, our, uh, our clients have agreed to rendezvous with us at the, uh, uh, at a point in the, uh, the phenomena that they see, as, uh, that they have deemed as safe or have conducted business in before. I know this client ha uh, is very particular about their demands, so... What uh, whatever they lack in Klingon honor, they do at least have in sheer practicality. You have dealt with them before, then. I did not say that. Merely that I know, uh, but I do know others that have. Can I do an insight check on them? Go right ahead. That will be insight and command versus his um, command and presence. Ah, yes, my worst stats. <laughs> Spectacular. You can't do it. Let's go. Can I use my psychoanalysis focus? Um, yes, I will permit that here. And oh, yeah, I'm not being that unless unless. Nope. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Okay. It, it was worth a try. Yes. Um, Kalvak, to you, seems uh, quite convinced of what he's saying to you. So you you don't necessarily have a reason to doubt him. Um, that doubt may be to your... Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I mean... I have plenty of reasons to doubt him. Yes, to not yes. like him. But this is not one of them. This is yes. not adding to them. And he's not precisely giving you any choice. The GM takes two threat. <clears throat> Anyway, so naturally, um, 
with the exception of uninvited, but apparently, uh, well, possibly useful, uh, interlopers, he says with a, uh, what, pa uh, as close to, uh, acknowledgement as he is going to give to you, Will. Oh, he knows how to treat a lady for sure. <laughs> With that cease, except... your cease your complaining. I have hired her. <laughs> well, then perhaps you can ta uh, perhaps you can task her to something useful other than picking the pockets of uh, other crew members. If he was more attentive, she would not have. She has made her point. Whoa! <laughs> Don't get in a fight. I've never had to put a Nausicaan back together before. Kroshoff just... He... Started, mate. Kroshoff steams a little bit, but he's going to keep his cool. Um, at any rate, for the rest of you, we have ro uh, roles suitable to the talents you are bringing here. <laughs> Tabak, I trust you and... Lad are, are capable of uh, Raldar. He, I honestly don't care about your name. The GM does very much. Let's be clear about that. And I'm very bad at remembering the <laughs> proper pronunciation. But Kalvak, the character, doesn't give a shit one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> All I care about is that you two can keep my engine room working. Uh, <clears throat> whose engine room? Your engine room, Tabok. Which is necessary to get the clients that I am able to find the, uh, in order to uh, perform the goods and services that are going to make back both of our investments. And as the one with those connections, I trust you would mind your own complaints. And certainly, for, uh, as to the rest, um, as at Korg, a competent enough navigator, as I understand, in spite of your uh, unfortunate asymmetric impediment. Why, of course. And someone that is at least competent enough to work with all of the physiologies that we are going to have on board. Ugh. Except for Nausicans, apparently. I'm a quick study. I'm sure you'll be able to find enough practice. I hope I don't forget Klingon physiology. That would be bad. I clap like a hand on Kresik's shoulder, like like I'm proud of him <laughs> for being able to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> All of my med medical equipment is like extra large size. Like it's size toy, Gorn. <laughs> <laughs> the hypo spray is like he's carrying around a fire extinguisher. It, it's the it's the cartoonishly <laughs> large hypodermic needle. Oh God. Basically, oh, between that and my like specialty revolver of cocktails, um, <laughs> yes. This, this man carries a whole X-ray machine with him. <laughs> it's called a tricorder. <clears throat> oh my god! Uh, can I trust you to? Uh, anyway. <sighs> Final fueling and uh, cargo loading is being overseen as we speak. We can be off this. Uh, we can be off this planet uh, within uh, within a few hours. Is that a problem for any of you? There were still a few things that needed closing and repairing, but I have parts. <laughs> uh, thank you. But it is nothing that would interfere I... with our takeoff. Mm. 
Uh, well, first off, Ray, if there was anything you were adding there, uh, we have lost audio again, possibly. Sorry. Oh, um, there you are. You're here. No, okay. whatever, whatever Kresik said, I have parts. I was just going to ask, is, does he mean human parts? Or what, what kind of parts do you have? Body parts? I wouldn't put it past him. <clears throat> have we secured pr enough provisions? They shall be sufficient for our voyage and to uh, well enough to get us back to any port, certainly anywhere away from here. Did you find a chef? Uh, that, I believe, is at least one, uh, one small talent that his colleague, Justin Nekroshoff, is a little more capable at. He prepared Targ. Uh, Kroshoff uh, looks back and forth amongst you. I, I do not know Brekgar's preferences. I was not expecting your voice to sound like that at all. I thought it was going to be like high-pitched and ballooned. Okay. Was anyone else thinking that? Was, was that just me? I believe that was just you. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, say, I, say to what you... Is, Tabak is really trying not to laugh when she says things like that. He's actually finding her amusing <laughs> as all hell. <clears throat> well, say to what you need. We're going... Uh, I mean to get us off this mud ball as quick as possible. As always, it has been my goal as well. Make sure we have our provisions. Make sure we are our water tanks are filled. Our deuterium Clean tanks are water. filled. Our deuterium tanks are filled, and the antimatter pods are stowed, and we will be good to go. Have we managed to acquire any more torpedoes? The paltry few we have in stores are. Insufficient for my thinking. Not all of that equipment is so easy to come by, but after this job, we'll be able to fully stock an armament bay. Till then, we'll make do with what we have. I have no intention of the using them needlessly, though. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get this straight. How... So we're not we're not allowed to know what we're carrying. We're not allowed to know who we're carrying it to. Um, but we're not going to be equipped to carry it that far anyway. So what, why? <laughs> what are you, what are you doing? This ship will get us far enough. Well, Just, the uh, the torpedoes us. may, uh, the torpedoes may have to wait, but they will, um, uh, but we'll be able to afford plenty after we fulfill this job. Well, and I don't believe I gave woe any, per uh, this... How did I do that name? Continuity because I just error. Said it, you fool. Oh. In any case, this Hadebach does not uh, does not have standing to question our flight plan. Of course, she does. She's a member of our crew. <sighs> and a crew is beholden to their commander. As, is, as the commander is beholden to the crew. Well, you had better... I roll my we eyes may, at all We this. may not be Imperial Navy, but we are still... Well, I was going to say we are still Klingon. We are still within the bounds of the Empire. Indeed. And perhaps... Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're going to take that code to heart, then perhaps you should uh, trust the... The uh, trust that your captain and the one man most capable of uh, finding the uh, finding clients that, as I've stated many a time at this point, will make back your precious investment. It will have to uh, it will have to suffice that not all of these details are so readily available. We will do things your way for now. This will not always be so. We'll see. If we are clear, then I must get back to the ship 
to finish the preparations for our precipitous launch. Do you want my parts? I am not certain how to reply to that particular statement. Are you our medical officer? Yes. Good. You know which landing slip? Yes. Fine. Be there. Store your parts in your quarters. So you don't want ship parts. Ah! You did not say ship parts. I was afraid you had some pieces from some unfortunate individual. I'm a doctor, not a savage. Hey, another one on the bingo card, everyone. Yes, I just clapped. <laughs> that, one. that one was brilliant. Good job. Uh, Set them up, you knock them down. Then just bring them to the ship. When we're looking at... Oh, God, I can't remember my co-owner's name here real quick. Calvec. Calvec. Are you coming to the ship now, or will you be there moments before we take off? Uh, I'll be... Uh, I'm heading back now. I need to see to it that... Uh, see to it that everything else is loaded on, and that I'm... Help is properly uh, situated. Fine. Whoa, do you need to gather belongings? Eh, I think I'm good. Then come with us as we go back to the ship. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Right. Um, for his part, um... Calvac is not going to stop to uh, drink anything that was brought out to him. Uh, he even he might go so far as to look disdainfully at the what swill the bar was able to throw at him, and uh, just kind of. Oh, we didn't order it. any drinks for him. Oh, fair enough. We never got the chance. <laughs> yeah, he didn't care. <laughs> That's good. If he wants drinks, He's... he can buy his own. Nope. He's picking up the tab. <laughs> he he leaves before he can pay. <laughs> oh, what's the tab? He'll come back later, maybe. Yep. Um, yep. I go over. I I make sure to leave a a generous uh, uh, tip for the the barkeep uh, and thank her for for caring for. Our, uh, our friends, and maybe when we come back, we can uh, see about adding to her repertoire of music and stories. She she looks over the uh, she looks at the tip, and as she takes it, she greets you with a uh, uh, she greets you with a nod and uh, a good full smile. Well. Uh, much would be appreciated, and it's nice to see that there's some small semblances of this uh, of honor on this planet yet. So, uh, is there anything that anyone else would want to do before leaving and uh, making their way towards the starport? Hmm. Nope. I'm uh I have plenty to do on board the ship. This once was a the, distraction for me. Once the captain's gone, I'm gonna ask, do you think uh he he kinda seems a little on the grouchy side. Uh do you think we ought to carry some extra fiber on board for him? Maybe maybe uh, you know, a good digestive tract helps maintain the the honor within. I, I kind of lean over to, to Kresik and uh, kind of joking, medically joking with him. He doesn't get the joke, but he says, <sighs> fiber is important. Is the stump irritated? Well, he did say he didn't give a crap, so it might have been a few days. Hmm. 
I have something for that. We should serve it with his blood wine Often to make sure he's... Large doses, yes. Yes. yes indeed. What will keep him in regular, you know? Mm. Regularly out of my way. That would be best. A regular captain is an honorable captain. You are not his allies. He pays us. That's 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 the ally. <laughs> Good. And that being said, I get up from the table. Tell Rawl. I'm sorry. I'm having problems with his name. Raldar. See you yeah. back. At the, see you back at the ship. Whoa! Come with me. In the bath? I, I thought this was just shit talking. What? Well, I, I suppose we were shit talking, seeing as we were talking about slipping him large doses of fiber. But not the point. Back to the ship. I need to know yes, what. Sir? I need to know what you can do aside from remove the uh, gojmo from someone. I can remove a lot of things from a lot of someone's mate. Just you see. What can you do that is useful on board a ship? And I'm saying I'm, this conversation mm. is going to happen as we're walking. Yep. If anybody else is yeah, walking yeah. with us, that's... Yeah, yep, I follow suit. Yep. Yeah, I'd imagine I follow as well. I take a quick stop off at my place to pick up all my supplies. And your my, parts. And my parts. My massive filing cabinet of a backpack that has all of my medical gear and then just a, a giant tarp that I am using to drag these parts with me. I just it's, imagine it looks like a giant dead body down the street. Just it does. It absolutely does. <laughs> it absolutely does. And, and if I see him... Perfect. Before we get I actually back have him. wrapped it up in like clothing and stuff too. So like every once in a while you'll, oh see, my God, you'll see like a pant leg kind of fall out. And stuff like that. <laughs> to keep it safe. I'm, I'm using it to, you know, like keep it from bouncing around, you know, to, to protect these pieces. Padding, padding exactly. Padding, I got you. So a, a, a the leg. are filled with gloves and one falls out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what, is in that, what is in that glove? Oh, that's just five uh, self-sealing stem bolts. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, so uh, he's, he's sort of interrogating uh, uh, whoa, as to what sort of shipboard tasks she can accomplish. What do you do on board ship? I was once a second in command on the, the last vessel I worked on, and, uh, well, more of a co captain situation, really. And, uh, I'm pretty good at just general system maintenance, as well as, you know, in space combat. Ah. Um, pretty nifty with weapons. Good, good. Shooting people may become necessary. In my line of work, it usually is kind of part of the job. Good. I've I have slightly upgraded the disruptor cannon on board this ancient Hulk that we have acquired. I've at least brought them up to modern specs. We have a very limited supply of torpedoes, however, but all all five launchers to work. Well, you know, no good crew should just rely on torpedoes in the first place. You've got to have maneuverability and all that oh, good this, stuff. This ship is maneuverable. Yeah. It can oh, fly. It can fire. Very well, yes. Well, we will find out how well, but all testing... You've never... It. I haven't. You've never I've gotten only, near. I have only just finished the repairs and upgrading. Ugh. Yes. I All understand. right. Uh, I do not enjoy the prospect of taking an <clears throat> untested vessel into space and into potential battle, but we have a little in the way of choice at the moment. Mm. Need you not worry. I'll take care of the piloting. Of course you will. 
my turn. I just kind of look over at uh, at Isaac and I say, "You've been doing it very long." For quite a few years. Yep. Mm. Well, so far, Essek, I have, so good. Essek, I have finished the modifications to your console to make it easier for you to operate. I appreciate that. Hopefully the cup holder is, is uh, installed. The, yes. Yes, I did install that, although I don't know why. You never know. You might get thirsty on, on board. Yes. It is I've, also taken, drink hot. I've, also, I've also taken the, the time to install what I believe are referred to as seat belts in every chair on the bridge. Uh, sissy stuff. A, a Klingon ship with safety measures? Unheard of. It warms my cold reptilian heart to hear these safety measures and... Uh, uh, features to make it easier for Isaac to pilot. People actually caring about this kind of stuff. <laughs> I made it easier for him to pilot the vessel so that we don't all die needlessly because he can't reach a particular button. The self-destruct button, on the other hand. <laughs> That's far, way over on the other side. <laughs> that is far, far away from any station you might sit at, Isaac. Oh my God! <laughs> do does, do our characters know about the the tiny tiny uh, furball of a of a companion yet? Ezek uh, uh, would know about it, and so would uh, Raldar. Raldar. I'm, I'm nobody, kidding. Nobody else. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, nobody. Uh -huh. Anybody? Else. Obviously, Woe hasn't met uh, Cheshire yet, and neither has Kresik. So. Yeah. Um, and I was just yeah. making sure that uh, I would, I've gotten the pronunciation of your name down. I was making sure they did too. Um, that being said, if you have any input or anything you'd want Raldar to say or conversation, then uh, by all means, jump to it. Well, we head back to the ship. This whole conversation has been going on as we're headed back to the ship. Oh, yes. Yeah, back to the ship. Uh huh. Has the cargo already been loaded by the time we get back there? Indeed it is, and I was just waiting to get things transferred. Um, you head back out into the, once again, rather cool night um, on Gordacor and begin walking away from the uh, settlement uh, to the outskirts area, where the starport is built it's a it's a bit of a hulking structure definitely an older one back from the colony's mining days um but at the top of the this large set of buildings are landing pads that are featured on new or like they spread out in numerous locations uh, each with a bit of shielding um to the side um, and an open uh, they are open air as far as the direct vertical above them, as well as uh, aft, or er, like aft, or er, to the aft and uh, bow of the vessels. Um, your walking will take you uh, er, like up a series of steps and through some fencing, um, which, to the extent there's any guards on there, they will wave you through. As I imagine, Tabok at least has some credentials that is appropriate for this. And you find your way round to the uh, to the Yan. Um, it is an older. Uh, it is definitely an older Raptor style of vessel. Um, the uh, it looks so tiny in that landing bay. Indeed, this was meant for. Yeah, this place was meant to accommodate larger um, cargo haulers and. Indeed, the uh, compared to them, this little raider is certainly uh, smaller than uh, any of them. It's smaller than a lot of the uh, mainstream Klingon vessels that are being run, be they the uh, the older D6s uh, or Korgli of the um, uh, of the Imperial fleet. And certainly the wealth of designs that the great houses operate. Um, 
certainly compared yeah, those, to those gothic monstrosities. Yes, compared to uh, what you have, this definitely harkens back to a slightly more utilitarian design, um, where there are still sort of threatening, perhaps bird-like features to it, but that the um, that uh, you know the the houses with the great wealth they have accumulated over these years have built just monstrous, uh, ornate, elaborate vessels that very much do the job while showcasing the wealth of their uh, their places in the empire. Uh, nothing with terrible need, of course. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, uh, yeah, with all of that, uh, the Klingons, uh, er, uh, what, oh yeah, the, the group of you, uh, proceeds up to the, um, you proceed up to the, uh, launch bay where you find the, uh, yeah, you find the Yon in decent working order. Uh, let's see, the... Nos uh, the Nosican you met earlier, um, Kroshoth uh, is standing out on guard. He is looking at the bunch of you and um, just barely like gives you an acknowledgement. Um, as you close the distance with him, he simply says, Captain Kalvak uh, reports that all is ready aboard the uh, aboard with the cargo. We only need you to get these systems properly started. Is it in the main cargo bay? It is sequestered to us uh, to a secondary chamber on one of the upper decks you need not worry of the cargo but i always worry about the cargo uh, thank you you may go about whatever business you have now where can i leave these parts take them to the engine pit Put them on one of the work tables. Touch no controls. As he just <laughs> lumbers bending down to get into this launch and in, into this landing pad and lumbers inside. Yeah, he's gonna have to because the corridors are about are like right over his head. He's two and a half meters yes. tall. And the decks are about two and a half meters tall. Yes. That doesn't mean that the doorways are that tall, though. He's going nope. to have freaking yep. duck everywhere. Yep. Yep. Uh, it is probably something that Raldar has gotten used to at this point, um, having to hunch down in the ship. Do I need to make a check it's... to see if I hit my head on anything? It's second nature for me. <laughs> Indeed. Um, for Kresik, uh I will go ahead and ask you to give me... Oh, let's see. Let's call this... Mm, control and Con to navigate the, uh, to navigate the area. Not my worst role. Definitely not my worst role. I'm not sure what the difficulty was, but... Oh, I was going to just set that at a difficulty of one for the purpose of fluff, but that is... Uh... With that, I'm going to give you... A... Or you will get a momentum back from that. Um... I spent a decent number of... A decent amount of time around Klingon-sized enclosures. Yes. So... 
You're, it, it's just hunching down like when you go through one of their doorways, but all the time now. Less than pleasant, but this whole thing is less than pleasant. Yes, yes. But, of course, Kalvek does not care. So, the, the bunch of you scarcely have time to uh, start settling in when a ship-wide broadcast comes over. When's my... Uh... Uh, when's our power getting uh, started? I uh, I want this ship to take off. Soon enough. Stop complaining. Head to the engine the the engine pit. Make sure that you know. Double check all my consoles. Make sure that the deuterium tanks are filled. Make sure that we've got enough dilith, uh, not dilithium, uh, enough uh, antimatter in the storage pods. Make sure those are properly stored. <laughs> and start flipping switches to turn everything on. I head to the uh, to the helm and uh, do the pre-flight checks on there. Okay. Oh, I tell, um, whoa, uh, find some quarters that are not occupied. Wait there until I can make sure we have a position available for you immediately. I know we do, but I'm going to have to deal with him. Okay, yankee dory. And I head off for that. Don't, as you walk off, don't kill anyone. I wouldn't dream of it, babe. Preposterous. Yes, yes. So, um, Tabak, where are you heading to in the meantime? Me? Uh, yeah, I'm going to the to the engine pit. Okay. Like I said, to make sure everything's all, you know, all our tankages are full, make sure everything's stowed properly, and start up the engine. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, are you heading with... Uh, Raldar, are you heading with him to the engine pit? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's my assistant engineer, so yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So... It's just uh, the two of us, so... <laughs> yep. We'll, we'll the cut... Two of us. We will... Sorry. Oh, you're quite all right. Um, we'll cut over by the engine pit, um... As you are overseeing, uh, you are overseeing bits of the controls. It seems as though um, the what station staff there was uh, did properly. Uh, the, it, they didn't put the uh, plugs in the wrong place. You do indeed have uh, not necessarily full tanks of deuterium and other uh, power supplies as you would have liked, uh, but it is. I mean, it'll get you there, at least. Um, so, that being said, as we get the startup sequence, I'm going to say, um, if one of you would like to give me a control engineering and the other may assist, which, as a reminder, the assist comes with a single d20 roll as opposed to uh, the two d20s, you may take that option. I can do the uh, control. Uh, Wait a minute. Control engineering. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at my character sheet, and there are mm -hmm. some numbers that are not the way I left them. Oh, dear. Let me take a look. Because, yeah, my security and engineering seem to be backwards. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Let's fix that. So. There you are. Okay. Um, so... I can I can do the control and engineering and I have two values. No, I have one value that can go to that and a focus. Well, the focus will expand your range for critical success, so that's obviously okay. something that we can tap. Uh, so, if what core systems? I think that would apply. Um, as yeah. far as the 
as far as the value goes, um, that would be if you are wanting to tap okay. the point of determination um, to either and a game. talent. Wait, no, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Talent oh. was the the one that I would need. Okay. And I have doors. That the, that talent would be I know my ship. Okay. Would you happen to recall offhand what that does, or have it written down? Uh. Because if not, I know then... I, I I am I am infinite I, I, infinitely I am intimately aware of the capabilities uh, of this ship. Um, as to what that means, I apologize. Uh, Give me a moment. No, well, you are quite all right because, of Double course, check and look in the book. The GM, of course, knows his rule book, so. I have that on hand for you, um, okay. and the the benefit which that would confer uh, would follow along. Uh, let's make sure that I haven't gone to the. Uh, I did go to the wrong page here. That is my mistake, but one very quickly corrected. Um, so I have the list here for. Uh, Rather, player-based talents, not the ship mm -hmm. ones. That was definitely not where we needed to go. Um, okay. Well, gee, I thought this was the proper list here. Oh, this is... There we go. Okay, so I know my ship. Um, that would be uh, when you are attempting a task to determine the source of a technical problem with your ship, you may add one bonus okay. d20. All right, my, my bad then. So that's, I just get to use the focus. That's quite all right, but let's see has, what... I, I will admit now it has been a while since I've looked at the rulebook, so... Fair enough. But while we're on the topic, I'm going to spend a point of threat to raise your complication range by one. So set that... So the complication of two? Yes. Okay, and I'm only I only get to roll two dice, right? Correct. Unless you wish to okay. spend momentum. Okay. Um. No, I think I'll just go for the roll for right. Okay. Well, and that wait, a complication means I need two successes, right? Uh, well, complication just mean or if the if you roll a twenty or a nineteen, then a complication will occur. Um, as far as difficulty, I don't believe I had set that yet. Uh, for this, I'm going to declare a difficulty of three to properly uh, get the vessel started up. All right, then I will be spending momentum to add to this. Indeed. You you do have Raldar who you can ask for help, too. Okay, so yeah, so Raldar can help. Yes, that would be good. So that gives me an extra die if he helps. He I, rolls a if die. I roll an extra die. Okay, so you roll an extra die, and then I'm also going to spend one of the momentum to add a die. Correct. That would work. All right. All right. So this is a task roll. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Blammo. Well, uh, suffice to say, I don't think I have any need to... Uh, yeah, I okay. don't need to take that momentum away, because that is six successes right there. So that'll be, another, that'll be another two on top of uh, what I send along here. Uh, let me award that. Um, there are a few moments as you are... Um, there are a few moments as you are running some... Uh, or closing out some final diagnostic programs you had running that... Uh, the, the system isn't entirely responsive, but, but uh, between the two of you, you are able to quickly work out uh, any issues with the startup and just go down the checklist, um, methodically getting this engine, which in some uh, which has been partially been rebuilt, uh, so far as you're concerned, um, but you get that into. Uh, into working process where the antimatter uh, and matter begin to collide, the containment fields hold, the fusion reactors also kick up, and oh, with the, yeah, with that you find uh, there is a steady increase in the dim reddish light 
uh, to what is appropriate brightness and yeah the mains are nominal um as bridge we are ready ah, not a moment to lose then um as calvac closes the line uh raldar you find as the light comes up uh your gaze at the console is met by another smaller set of feline eyes Is the cat on the console? The cat is indeed on the console, staring you dead in the face. Put cat on floor. Uh, the the cat just <laughs> barely, uh, yeah. As bad as Calvet can sometimes be, um, the ca it, this cat sh somehow manages to show you a greater degree of indifference. Uh, it, it's hard sometimes being uh, feeling like you're valued. So tempted. Tempted. <laughs> but no, I will not eat the cat. <laughs> Good plan. <clears throat> Today. <laughs> <laughs> so, while, while Raldar is busy skipping a meal, um, back on the bridge, um, power begins to kick up. Uh, Azik, as you've come in, you noticed uh, not only that the Noskin is at a uh, weapons post, um, but indeed that a second one is uh, joining the uh, bridge. There's also um, another individual, a very smaller, slighter uh, individual who is completely of a uh, snow white complexion, um, has completely black eyes, no uh, distinguishing between like a cornea versus iris or anything of the sort. Um, and comes in quite a bit uh, shorter than anyone else. You'd probably put him generously at about 4'11". Uh, do I recognize his species at all? You do. Um, he would be what is considered to be among the Jegpui, uh, the conquered peoples of the Empire, as very specifically a Rantau. Uh, they're used basically for hard labor the occasional bit of uh and the occasional bit of like domestic service uh as is true with a great deal of the peoples klingons have conquered uh, but it's very rare to see one on a ship i i give him a a nod and uh get back to prepping the uh Going through the prep checklist. He almost recoils at this, uh, but kind of looks a little quizzically uh, before the Noskin, uh, the large Noskin, uh, Kroshoth slams his fist down. Attention to sensor console. And he's just going to, like, crane down it, like, his elongated head as much as he can and start working. Um, as power kicks online, um, Captain Kalvac uh, starts giving orders. All right. The umbilicals are already cleared. So, uh, so we don't have much need for, uh, much need for anything else. Give me full, do uh, give me full ventral thrusters. And once we're, cl uh, once we're clear, fire up impulse engines just at one quarter. And if you're wondering, yeah, if you're wondering, Mister Korg, that's a control con roll. He probably does scream at you, but yep, yeah, that is. Uh, oop, let me roll that down. Yeah. That is going to meet the difficulty as well. So there's a slight moment where the inertial dampeners don't quite kick in, uh, 
but they they catch up pretty quickly and so you feel a slight bump as the vessel leaves the surface but then it becomes uh, like pretty even and motionless the pull of gravity is less noticeable from the planet um, or it certainly doesn't uh, bother you so much as the um, as the artificial gravity kind of helps to provide a slightly different center and kind of mess with the or like obscure the gravitational pull of the planet uh, but yeah the <laughs> The thrusters clear you above the dock and help you clear, uh, like reach into the skies, and you fire up the impulse engines, uh, giving you a quick rush out of the atmosphere. Uh, within the course of less than a minute or so, the Anne has broken orbit and is uh, now departing Guotacor. <sighs> let's, be, uh, let's hope that all your uh, all your operations are quite so competent as that. Perhaps I'll be reason to keep you around once we have the funds to choose otherwise. Uh, snicker, snicker out. He they, he won't acknowledge that. Um, and after a quick looking, uh, after a quick look to the other two Nausicans, um, so uh, one of you, uh, one of you should be on the upper deck. Say to it that uh, your duty station is attended. Uh, Kroshoff and the other Nausicans look to each other. To which the the other Nausicans, a smaller gentleman who's. Uh, frame is a little bit more um it's a little more slight compared to Kroshoth and so far as he is not a big beefy gentleman um but he's still reasonably well kitted um he could probably handle himself in a fight okay uh provided of course that the very large respirator mask he wears around his face doesn't sustain damage uh of course, you don't know how much he needs that, so that is its own issue. <sighs> well, perhaps this business will... We can put this behind us shortly. <sighs> Helm, take us to warp three. Plot a course for Clark to Kelbracht. Aye, aye, sir. And with a uh, with a few uh, console uh, with a few commands typed into the console, expertly laid out for you, uh, the uh, the Yan uh, will engage its warp engines and leave the Quota Core system. And with that, I think that's as good a place as any to actually leave off this plot for now, um, since we are. Uh, we're nearing the close of uh, uh, we're nearing our end time for tonight so uh, yeah I think this is where we will go ahead and call it Very hey cool. good game good good game Wonder. yes yes a, a good start for everyone um, I certainly hope that our audience enjoyed the stream and we will look forward to bringing this uh, bring this again to you next week uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, for anyone that's still hanging around the Twitch, I'm going to do the thing that I try to do every time and almost succeed at as often, and go ahead and set up a raid here. So give me just one moment. Oh, do 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 do. I'll admit I'm always bad at this. For those on the recording, this will, uh, I will probably cut at a certain point here. So we will uh, catch all of you uh, at a later time. Uh, anyone that's around this weekend, feel free to check us out on, um, check us out on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
and we will be running uh, another episode of Star Trek Adventures Aegis. So we very much hope you enjoy. But anyway, uh, for everyone else, that will be us signing off. So have a good rest of your evening. Have a good one, folks. Bye-bye. Yeah. Get out! Ha, 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 ha.